we'll talk about Fulham and, and what they got right. As he said, um, you know, Marco and his team put everything together perfectly for this game against Tottenham. But we can't ignore the fact this was a really big missed opportunity for Tottenham. What do you think went wrong in terms of what, what they put out on the well, pitch? Well, yeah, it's a... So when, you, when I've watched Tottenham this year, there's been so much joy in their play. I've really thoroughly enjoyed it, the energy they've played with. And I thought that performance or those kinds of performance were a thing of the past. I didn't think we'd be seeing them anymore, anymore under Ange Postacoglu. They were off it from minute one. They had a couple of moments towards the end of the first half. I'm looking for excuses. Yes, Van der Ven not playing is, is a big one because he's such an important player, but there's been other games when he hasn't played and they've been fine. That was, there was a, a lethargy about their play. There was no energy. Players that have had big performances, you know, um, Destiny and Doggy's been fantastic. So many plaundits. Today, so off it. Basuma in midfield, James Madison. They never got to grips in, never won individual battles. I, I was amazed. I almost want to hear an excuse from the manager that it was like a lasagna gate or something. <laughs> that they, there was some kind, there was a flu in the, in the team because I can't almost fathom what I've seen in terms of their energy. The goals epitomised it and I just didn't see it. After last week, the way that they played against Aston Villa in that second half where they blew them away, I thought they'd be coming into this game. But what they came into this game with a... And there was arrogance that we're just going to play and turn up and we're going to win comfortably. And the Premier League isn't like that. This might be the, the warning that he needs. Ange Postecoglou never, never really has a go at his players. But I'm, I'm, I'd be in that dressing if I was him absolutely fuming. You want to point fingers at players and say, if you think that's good enough, we won't make top four. We might not even get in the top five. They've got to get themselves back, going again. But that was like just so uncharacteristic of what I've seen this season. That was like the previous two or three seasons when I've, when I've been watching Tottenham. We will hear from the Spurs boss shortly. But it was a, a, a lacklustre performance from, from Tottenham in, in that game. But it has to be said, Fulham started it in the way that they, they meant to go on. And Rodrigo Moniz is, is just a player in fantastic form. That's seven from seven for him in the, in the Premier League. When you find your flow, you can feel it. And he looks like a player, bang in form. He looks like he's enjoying his football. And, and we said before the game... He is that focal point for Fulham, and he has been. But he's got players around him that find him and put the ball on the sixpence for him. And the way that he's kind of produced, and the first goal just epitomises, you know, what, what he's done and what he's all about. So the first goal, as, as it progresses through, this was what Fulham were all about today. The full-backs joining in. This ball here, Willian just gets his body in the way. The second ball drops. Pereira has a little look and sets uh, Robinson off on his way. And, Jamie, you've been waxing lyrical about this type of ball, but the way that he controls it, he kills the ball dead, and the time between the shot, the, the touch and the shot, is so quick. But we can just watch it again from this angle, the way that he gets in behind and kills the ball, and then he takes it early before Vicario can get set. But this is what I think is, you know, we, we highlighted Dragerson before the game, and he doesn't actually have a look at where Munez is when he's running off his back shoulder. And I think when you don't look at it, when you don't look at where your striker is, you're in trouble and he's punished Tottenham. Yeah, Dragicin's first start for, for Tottenham, in for Mickey van der Ven, who was injured in the game against Aston Villa. Is that a, a, a factor that we should be taking into consideration, do you think? Possibly, possibly. But I also think sometimes what we do, and we're all guilty of it as pundits, we, an we analyse mistakes or look for something. Sometimes you just got to accept the quality. And Anthony Robinson's ball is magnificent because he takes out the two centre-backs. Muniz makes a great run off, off the back of Dragosan. First touch is immaculate and he finishes it. So there's something you've got to hold your hands up and say, great play. The, he, he tries to hold the line. Could he have maybe ran a, a, in a slightly different line to maybe get closer to him? Even then, I'm not sure what you can do. Sometimes you just have to go... Unbelievable play. We saw it last week with pa Papisar against Aston Villa. The cross just took everyone out of the, out of the play. And I believe... Get, the game's evolved so much now with, with say, right wingers that are left footed, and everyone wants to come back in, pass it back to their fullback, and then the ball comes in from a different angle. I'm seeing more and more of this now where fullbacks, wingers, maybe being right sided players playing on the right, a little bit, say, with Beckham and Giggs when they did it. Crosses coming in because that's what you want as a forward. You don't want to have to, every time you make a great run, check and think, oh, the ball's not coming in, it's going to come back. You, it's very difficult. But when, that, when you know that delivery is coming in, that kind of quality, it, it's, you can't defend it. It's magnificent. 
magnificent play. It really is. And I, I almost prefer to just congratulate that rather than dig out Dragasan because it was a great first touch and a man that's so, so confident right now. It was more a, a general point about Van der Ven and we know what yeah. Spurs' record is. I think over two points a game and, and about one and a half when he's not in the in the side. But in terms of their, their second goal, you asked Raul Polina about it. So just talk us oh. through that ball that you described where he spots Lukic. Yeah, I mean, this is... There we go. I'm going to highlight him. And he knows. Good midfield players, they, they already know. People talk about scanning and that sometimes scanning, it's too late. He, the ball's in his hand. He knows if I can get this ball down, I can then play it, that pass there, as quickly as I can. Now, this summed up... To, I mean, I just can't believe it. James Madison is a good example. James has been brilliant for Tottenham. He's not even concentrating, he's having a chat with Son. Instead of thinking, right, well, I can get back into this area because Luke Hicks gonna, is so free. Destiny a doggy can't do a lot because he knows he's got a Wobie. I think we can see his boots at the bottom of the screen. Maybe, maybe not. So he's in a difficult one if he goes and presses him. But uh, the, first, the, first, the most important thing is Jao Paulina because you've got to have the quality to get this onto that right foot and then whip it into him as quickly as you can and give him the time to then do what he wants. Can he do it? Yes, there, bang. Now you're in business. Got a major problem. Castagna, magnificent piece of play. He's looking to get an overlap as fast as he can, get around Iwobi. Now you've got two players there. You've got Destiny Adoggi and Brennan Johnson. Now, Brennan has got to go, right, what do I do? If I'm not going to go to the ball, I then have to follow the man that's going to do the overlap, which is Castagna. He doesn't do enough. But this bit of defending, and I've loved Destiny Adoggi this year, magnificent coming into play, but I, this baffles me how easily he gets beat here. Watch this. Watch this bit of defending. Look. Gets beaten, and now you've got a problem because Brennan Johnson hasn't done it. Again, we see that cross that comes into the box. It's so difficult to defend against. The other player I want to talk about as well is Yves Basuma, but that space there can't happen. Yves Basuma, number eight. You see him as a midfield player. There he is. You can see Yves is in that position there. You can see Lou Kick. Now, Dragosan gets... A, he's, he's got a problem because he knows that that ball is going to come into this area here and he's going to either decide to go out there. So he has to almost leave Luke Kick. And I think then that becomes the responsibility of Yves Basuma. So you can see him, number 28, he has a good look. He just lets him run past him now. Instead of running with him, and then he can maybe block that. It's an element of luck to the finish. But you know what, he gets the right the contact onto it. And a brilliant, brilliant guy. This one, this one shows you here. He just gets that sort of left knee. Ah, at least not giving the benefit of the doubt. It's a great finish and fully deserved. <laughs> but that summed up Tottenham. They were just wrong in every single area. They didn't get close enough to people all game. The player who's been right in every single area has been Rodrigo Moniz. And we've already talked about him. We asked Raul Polina about him, about his, his, his efforts. He's the top scorer in the Premier League since the start of, of February. And he got a second one in, in this game, is he? Yeah. Um, you know, he's been, like we said, he's been excellent. But this, th there's so much in this around Spurs' performance today. But... This, this goal is somewhat similar to, in, in the poacher's instinct, to the goal he scored against Bournemouth. The way he just gets there before the defender. And you just see here on the second phase, I think Bassi does really well here. He just gets a touch and he just fires it on target with pace, hits the inside of the post. And this is a case of what you said, Jamie, it's just a case of wanting it more. But yeah. the reaction, if we just pause it here, everybody is ball watching. Every Spurs player is ball watching. Romero's got good pressure on Bassi. He does, I think he does all he can in this situation. Perhaps could be a little bit tighter. But it's just this second phase. The yeah. reaction is too slow. And then Muniz has just got his second goal. Absolutely. Can I just take that back Sorry, one sec? Because I think you're, you're so right, Izzy. And there's two players that I just want you know, to highlight. And I think it just shows you how, how, the, how the Spurs... It'll show, it was summed up their attitude because of... And there's, again, so many plaudits. Saar, Basuma, brilliant. But... Today, I just, so just watch them. Watch their reaction of just thinking, OK, the ball's going to get cleared. There was not one, one second where they're thinking, where's the next phase? What about this ball bounces? What about if Bassi gets it and has a shot at goal? Am I going to follow it in? Just watch how they just walk. You know, they don't really interested in maybe stopping the play. They're trying to get onto the next one. And now, well, he reacts. Dragosan is, is in almost an impossible position. But they, were, they just weren't at it today. In, the, in a, any kind of... I I, I, it's baffled me how they can perform like that. It really has. I just wonder as well, Izzy, if it comes back to the point you made, 
with Muniz that he's, he's a player who's in fantastic form and he just thinks, I'm going to go for that ball because the way I'm feeling at the moment, <laughs> I'm going to get it. When, like, as a striker, I've been at places in my career where you get a run of goals, it's a nice feeling. As mm. a striker, I can imagine it's even better. But he's in, he's in that space at the moment and his goal against Bournemouth, it was similar to that. He just got to the ball at the fraction of the second before the defender and he's done exactly the same again. He's just sensed it. It's like a smell, a sixth sense where... You know where the ball's going to drop, and he got there, and, and he's he's helped himself to a second. Watched for a large part of that game by Raúl Jiménez, who's on the bench, and Fulham were worried that they were going to miss him. It looks like Moniz is more than capable of, of finishing that gap. Well, Ange Postecoglou a bit spiky there when asked about what that does in terms of their, their chances of finishing in fourth place in the league. But a fair question following that big victory against Aston Villa, where they felt you know, that they'd made real progress mm -hmm. to then say, well, if you go to Fulham and get beat, how does it, how does it change things? Obviously, they're going to want to go and, and win every game now. And they, they know that there's an 82% chance that if they finish in fifth, that's going to be enough for, for the Champions League. But in terms of finishing in the top four and making sure, it does change things, surely. Yeah, I mean, it's just that lack of confidence, what it does now. I mean, Aston Villa have got European football as well, lots of games to come. And Spurs haven't. They've got a free run. This is probably the least amount of games they've ever played in the Premier League. They went out of the Carabao Cup early. They went out of the, the FA Cup early. They should be absolutely fly, flying and fresh. And they didn't show that sharpness today for whatever reason. But it's gone. I've analysed that, what I felt about their performance. Now it's a case of looking forward. And what do we do to make sure that this doesn't affect our season? Because it's, it's a blip. There hasn't been too many of these performances this season. There really hasn't. So it's a case of how they get on with it, making sure that next week that they are back on it, sharp and ready to go. And sometimes there's, there comes a point in the season, managers have often spoken about it, where your team talk's already done for next week because if they've got anything about them, they're going to want to show. They're going to want to show. I think it's Luton at home next week. Two weeks. In two, sorry, yeah. two weeks yeah. Like, yeah, after the international break. They should be chomping at the bit. The hard bit is they've got an international break to stew on it. And he's got their manager now got to go back and he would be in his office all week thinking, what happened with that performance? That came from nowhere. And he's got to find a way of getting a reaction off his team. But I'm sure he will. He's always very measured, Ange Postacoglu. He doesn't get too carried away one way or the, or the other. And he says he doesn't worry about the, the psychological effect on, on his team. But that is something that he will, you know, he will want to do. He will want to make sure that his players aren't too affected, as Jamie said, by that, not just the defeat, but by the, the performance that they put in. I think, I mean, Ange Postacoglu, he's a very intelligent man and he's been very measured since he came into the Premier League um, with the way that he speaks and portrays after a win or a defeat or a draw at that as well. And I think that what I think he will learn about his team after tonight's performance is that was subpar. I mean, what we expect of Tottenham is what we've seen this season in patches so far. They've been absolutely superb to watch. They've played some exceptional football. And then when they perform like they did tonight, we're disappointed. So Ange Postacoglu does a good thing of sort of, you know, finding a happy medium in between. But I think what he will learn about his team tonight is leadership, growth, and then the attitude of the team, how they respond. Like Jamie said, the team talk's already done for next week, as in you've got to respond now. Words, words are cheap. Mm. It's about how, you know, Son, the captain, you know, you could see he was visibly emotional after the game. He knows that it's an opportunity missed. But had they not beaten Aston Villa last weekend, would we be having this conversation? We're not sure because Aston Villa are the other team in the mix. So, you know, it, it opens a can of worms, but he, he's intelligent, Postacoglu, in that he always refers to the growth of the team and what he wants to see is an improved performance. You mentioned the captain there and Son spoke to Emma. Well, as measured as we said Ange Postacoglu was, Hyung min Son was very emotional there, clearly affected. We saw him at the, at the final whistle, as Jamie said, he was very emotional there and he looks affected, seriously affected by, by that result and that performance. I think it's it's because of the performance. Yeah, of course the result is a negative, but I think the performance and he's a very you know emotional guy. He wears his heart in his sleeves, and he he's an absolutely wonderful footballer, and he shows his emotion in the way he plays. And I think when you like Spurs were just completely off it tonight in every department, and when you do perform like that, it hurts. And it's all about the reaction, as obvious as that sounds. It's how you can react from that. And he's got a big job on his shoulders to to raise the team. But I have no problem with that, you know, as in the emotion and, you know, being being true to who he is. Mm. And I'm probably, probably at... frustrated, Kelly, as yeah. well, because he's the guy that's seen a lot of those performances in the past where Tottenham have been one minute, they're, they're amazing, and then they don't look like they're a team that's that interested. So he's probably having a little panic up, thinking we can't let that trend set, set back in. And in a way... Now the team talk, they can make sure that they're ready for two weeks' time. It's not an ideal performance at all. And what it's done, it's let May United back and it's let Aston Villa into a really good position. Those other managers will think, OK, 
the door's open. There's going to be a lot of twists and turns in the top four race. Make no mistake. And that has just proved it. With Tottenham's fixtures coming up, you know, Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool, they've got a tough run. Aston Villa have got tough games. Manchester United have got tough games. And I still think, you know, with those fixtures, Tottenham should certainly make the top four. It would be a, a, it's not a, too much in it in terms of difficulty rating no. across those fixtures. They, you know, they've mostly... I think Villa and Tottenham have got the top three to play. Manchester United have still got Liverpool and, and Arsenal to come. And there's some, play, there's some teams in there as well who are going to be fighting for, for survival in the Premier League. Yeah, and with, with the way that Tottenham can play on their day, they can blow any team in this league away. And you look at those three games in the middle of their fixtures that are left remaining with Manchester City, Arsenal and Liverpool, and you go in, if you flip it, those teams won't want to be playing Tottenham. Yeah, no, exactly. And you look at next, even tomorrow for Aston Villa, got to go to West Ham. West Ham had a brilliant result against Freiburg. Maybe is it a good thing to play them after Europe? You don't know how emotionally that's going to, what that takes out of them. But that Luton game in a, in a couple of weeks for Tottenham is obviously going to be really important. And like I said, you couldn't really trust any of those three games to go perfect, uh, three teams to go perfect. There's absolutely no chance of that happening. It's just going to be a case of picking up points because that what that's shown us today, because I personally felt that Tottenham would, would beat Fulham comfortably, you can't predict in this league. It's too difficult, you know, and you try to analyse it. Tottenham have just got to find that confidence again. Aston Villa have got to make a statement, win tomorrow, because there's no point finding it, having a good thing when, when Tottenham lose and you don't win at West Ham. They've got to try and capitalise on that. Yeah, well, we'll leave that there for a second while I just come in, because we don't want to... Um, we want, if you do want to predict it and try and work out which way <laughs> this one might go, then we don't, want to, we don't want to stop you doing that. But as you said, it is you know, almost impossible to work out which way many of those are, are going to go. But we do know that Tottenham will want to see an improved performance from, from their players. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at those fixtures there from the 20th of April, Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. That's, that's pretty much it. If they can find a way to get... I'm going to just go four or six points out of that. I'm sure they would take that right now because they're, they're so difficult because sides are going, you know, trying to win the Premier League. But they've just got to make sure that they don't let what has been a brilliant season for Tottenham just disintegrate right now. You know, and it doesn't matter that Van der Ven's not playing. They've still got enough quality. And I'm pretty sure with the manager, and, the, and I, I certainly have a lot of trust in him and the way they've played this season, I like to think that is a blip and a one-off. Well, a gorgeous setting for a fantastic result for Fulham. It doesn't do too much for them in terms of their, their place on the table. They stay in 12th. They move to within a point of Chelsea. But it's one of those results that just consolidates their place right in the middle of the table because they are so far off the bottom of the table and only five points off seventh. So a real opportunity for, for Fulham, if they want to, to push towards uh, those European places with 10 games left to go, nine games for Fulham left to go this season. Well, we talked about Rodrigo Meniz and his great goal scoring form because it's seven and seven. He's got some way to go till he catches the form of Harry Kane, who was back in the, in the numbers again. That's 31 goals for him now this season in the Bundesliga. He scored again in Bayern's 5-2 win against Darmstadt. It is now a record-breaking debut season for any player in Bundesliga history. He's 10 goals of Robert Lewandowski's 41-goal record for a Bundesliga season, and he's got eight games in which to do it. Having scored 31 in 26, if he carries on at that rate, it would be about nine and a half. So he could do it. He could equal, he could equal that record. The problem is he was taken off after twisting his ankle while, while going into the net. So it's been, it's been mixed for Harry Kane, and someone... Uh, has spent the, the well a few days this week with him, Jamie. Yeah, so yeah, I, I don't like to talk about, it, but I was doing that <laughs> with Snoop and Harry Kane. But anyway, <laughs> that's, that's enough of that. Um, Classic combination. Just, just, yeah, just three guys just hanging out, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, it was he was in great form. It's obviously difficult because he's he's aware that what Alonso's done that has been phenomenal at Leverkusen yeah. to go unbeaten all season. He can't really account for that, but his individual form has been phenomenal and. Of course, he'll have his eye on that Lewandowski record. People probably thought that would never even get... No one will get near it, let alone a player in his debut season. He, he thrives off chasing records, doesn't he, mm. Harry Kane? I mean, the way that he plays football. And to go, and, to go abroad and perform in that, you know, 
the way he is and score that many goals, it's it's unbelievable from him. Yeah, there's so much still to, to come for him potentially this season, even if the title is is pretty much gone with Leverkusen so far ahead of them in the in the Bundesliga. But you know, there are still those individual records as as you say. He's got a big season coming up with with England, with the Euros to come, get you know, in the friendlies, Brazil mm. are still to go there. There's that and potentially the Champions League where as a former Spurs player, they're up against Arsenal. By Great draw against Arsenal. Look at that. His record's phenomenal. I mean, second, second leg is obviously at home, so we don't quite know how that's going to go. But it'd be interesting to see if he's fit. He always wants to play for his country. I mean, everyone should always want to play for their country. And the fact that he's not, he might not be there, will they take a risk with, it with the Champions League coming up? What that will do will give uh, another player an opportunity. Watkins or whoever, Solanke might come in. So we're going to have a... It might give Gareth an opportunity to see who else is there or if we had a problem in a major tournament, who would we bring in if Harry Kane isn't there? So this might open the door for somebody else to get a debut against... or a debut game against Brazil. No, it's also, yeah. Yeah, but it's also an opportunity for Harry Kane to play against Brazil again and also an opportunity yeah. for Harry Kane to He'll add to those play, numbers. He'll want to play, of course, yeah, but he's got so much to play for yeah. in a friendly game right now. If he's, he's twisted, he looked like there was a little twist on his ankle there. So let's just see how it goes. He's getting ice on that as things stand, in case you were concerned about his fitness for, for England in the international break. Doesn't sound too bad, not that you want to rely on my medical experience.